Hello everyone and welcome back. After a long time of making no videos, unfortunately because my internet connection was broken, so the support team came today and they fixed it and I'm back online. So thank you so much guys for, for, your, uh, for your patience and uh, we are back to normal. I'm gonna start uploading very very soon and started with this amazing video. So at the time at the time that my internet connection was broken, I, I made some cars, not really special, but uh, I'm gonna be sharing with you guys, uh, not here, of course, so when we switch to beam and drive game, I'm gonna show you all of them and we will drive all of them. So in this video right now, you will be seeing a 1947 amazing icon, it's the Rebel 200. The name says it all, it looks very very beautiful. With the, with the sleek, with the sleek, la sleek lines, classic looking, and of course the the side fender mounted uh, side mirrors, of course with the with the fat wheels, small rims, wire wheels, looks very 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 classic and very very beautiful. So uh, yeah, before we start with all of the specs, I would love to remind you guys, please if you enjoy the video, remember to hit that like button, to get subscribed if you are new to the channel, and of course to share the video if you want to share it and. Uh, of course, to hit that notification bell button so you can get a notification each time I release a new creation or a new video. So let's start with this amazing car. We have an aluminium panels. Yes, I know this is not for mass produce. This is not for mass production. I know this car is not for not, not will be will not be mass produced. It will be a very 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 limited car. Space frame chassis. This is the first time ever that I use a space frame chassis the reason that i used it because i was reading the description for the space frame and it says here in this description let me show you what is it uh for the flex it, the the space frame chassis it will it, it will actually fight the flex that that, that happens regularly to, to the chassis when you are using it on the track because the car will uh, will go in a in a high speeds around corners and Therefore, you will be you will be putting a lot of stress on the chassis, which will have which will get a little bit, you know, flexed. I'm not going to say bent. No, of course, not, it will not be bent, but it will flex a little bit. But the space frame chassis, it will fight this uh, this flex, which will give uh, great uh, cornering and great handling. I forgot which which section, so you can pause the video and read it. So let's continue. I'm using galvanized uh, steel for the chassis, front longitudinal engine placement, double wishbone front suspension, and double wishbone rear suspension with plus five quality on the chassis. So it's a pretty pretty good chassis. Moving on, this is the engine in question. It's an inline six engine cast iron block, 86 millimeter on the bore and the stroke, which equals a three liter inline six engine dual overhead camshaft with four valves per cylinder. Some of you will say, and I'm, and I'm really sure of this, I'm, I'm really, really sure of this, that why, are, why, did, why did I choose dual overhead camshaft in, the night, in 1947? Some of you will say it, was, it hasn't been invented yet, but no, the dual overhead camshaft technology was, was available in the 40s, and you can search and find some amazing engines and, and amazing cars also that came with dual overhead camshaft in the 40s, I'm not kidding. So this and this technology was available. It's not really efficient. It's not really also uh, reliable. No, the reliability was well not good at all. But still a very very good option to go with if you are building a very very high performance engine. Uh, cast iron cylinder, uh, cylinder head with of course no VVL. It's the 1940s and yes, this is a weird combination. A cast iron crankshaft, but heavy duty cast connecting rods and heavy duty cast pistons. The reason for that is simple the torque limit the regular cast uh, internals the cast pistons and cast connecting rods they will not survive uh, with 213 pound feet of torque no they will only reach 160 and they will they will start to break yes my friends 160 pound feet of torque and the engine is making 213 so yeah that's why i've switched to heavy duty cast heavy duty cast uh, pistons and connecting rods Yes, the RPM dropped a little bit. I admit that even with plus 5 quality, the engine can go all the way to 5100 100 RPM. That's it. We have 9.3 to 1 is the compression ratio. A very, a very, very high compression ratio in the 40s. 9.3 to 1. That's very, very extreme back then. 51 on the cam profile, plus 5 quality, naturally aspirated engine, of course, a single barrel. Triple carburetors with, of course, racing intake manifold, so no air, no air filter whatsoever. 
super leaded uh, fuel fuel type with 98 octane fuel. 13.4 is the airfuel ratio with 60. Yes, yes, airfuel ratio with 66 on the ignition timing. 5,100 is the RPM limit with plus two quality. Long tubular headers, single exhaust type, of course, 2.2 inch exhaust diameter or 57.1 millimeters. No restrictions whatsoever, straight pipe with, of course, zero quality. And this is the final result 200 horsepower. All of that, all of the, all of that, all of, the, all of, the, all of those amazing parts, and we only reach, we will only reach 200 horsepower. Some of you will say, 200 horsepower, that's rubbish, my Honda can make more than this. That's correct, but this is 1940s. The 1940s, when you say 200 horsepower, it's it's like saying my car has a, a thousand horsepower back then. That's that's why, that what, that what, that what was 200 horsepower back then. 200 horsepower was considered a thousand horsepower these days. Yeah. So the engine was super, the engine is super, super powerful. I mean, this is a super natural aspirated engine. As I said, the reliability is not really good, but for a racing engine, well, for 25.5 is very, very good. And of course, the uh, service costs, not bad. Uh, and fuel economy for, for a triple carbureted racing engine, very good. We are using nearly all of the available octane fuel. Well, the engine is smooth. It's it's actually responsive. 29 in the, in the 1940s for a single barrel carburetor. Yeah, it's very very responsive. It's very noisy because it's a racing engine. Well, it's not really lightweight. No, it's heavy. But the horsepower and torque, these are the gems for this engine. So let's fire up this beast. This is how it looks. Sounds very good, looks very good, and it will perform very good, as you will see later. So moving on, I've chosen this 1945 coupe or coupe body with plus one quality on the body and the fixtures with this beautifully looking red color. And let me show you, and these amazing fixtures. Of course, the classic 1940s round lights, the front uh, chromey, of course, uh, grill. The indicators, the classic indicators with the, with the classic front bumper, and of course the company logo and the side mountings on the fender side mirrors. Of course the hood or the bonnet vents, and the classic door handle with the with the push button. So you need to push this button to open the door. The classic, uh, of course, the fuel filler cap, the beautifully looking, and these should be actually chrome. But unfortunately, I I exported the car before I just oh my god I just switched them to to Chrome, and the car that I exported them with was painted, not Chrome. So yeah, that was unfortunate. So of course we have dual exhaust pipes. Although the engine is using a single exhaust pipe, but of course at the end the company or the the factory will make like a split a split pipe to give it this classic look. Well, of course, the, the company logo and the keyhole, so you just you insert your key here and you will lift the, the tailgate or yeah, the, the trunk. We have, of course, the antenna. Although, I don't think it's, it's necessary because this car uses an AM radio. I don't know. I, forgot, I, I truly forgot. Do you need an antenna for the AM or not? I truly forgot, but it's here. It's here, why not? So, yeah. The car looks very classic, very beautiful, the lines, everything looks very, very beautiful. And of course the wire rims. Yeah, racing wire rims, they look very awesome. Moving on, it's rear-wheel drive of course, manual gearbox, 4 speeds, uh, 220 feet kilometers per hour is the gearbox top speed or 3.87 to 1 is the final drive with 50 on the spacing. Although, I don't know, let me check something. Just. Yeah, so 8.6, I want to check something, 8.5, oh, I should, I think I'm going to try and export the car, 
again. I don't know, I'm gonna try something. I forgot, did I make the car or not? I'm... I did make the car and I did drive it, but I don't actually remember tweaking the gearbox. Ooh, that's a biggie. So the wheel spin is so much, as you can see. Alright, so let's see. So, three speed gearbox. It will actually destroy the wheel spin. And the, the 0 to 100 times. So, let's see which one to go. Which way to go. So, this way, if I want to kill wheel spin. If I want to kill wheel spin, I need to. All right, so 8.8 .8 seconds. So, okay, so this is the the this is the silver lining then. So 8.8 .8 seconds, 6.1 percent. I mean, of course, of course, if I go with higher spacing, I can reach 8.3 seconds, which is much more quicker. But the wheel spin, I don't want this car to have amazing wheel spin. No, I want to be grippy. So 6.1 percent with 40, and 8.8 .8 percent seems very good. Let me try and see if I can get. A better result, maybe. No, I don't think I don't, I'm not. I'm not seeing it happen. So yeah, 40 open differential, of course. Um, sport compound tires, of course. Cross ply, cross ply tires. Yeah, not good at all. But that's the only option. 185 is the front and rear tire width. 14 inch rims, with of course 20 on the rear offset, on the rear rims, uh, rear rim offset. 675 is the tire diameter with steel rims and zero quality. Actually, why not? I'm gonna go with plus five tires. They will grip much better. And yeah, so it's, all right. So we have two, of course, drums SLS. That means a single. I think a single. Let me check. A single shoe, I think. Hmm. It's, it's not saying. All right, here we go. Yes, a single, a single leading shoe. Yeah, that's been a single leading shoe. Two seventy-five millimeters front and rear. Sixty-nine on the pads. Fifty-fifty is the brake distribution or brake base. Zero quality. No under tray, of course. Plus five quality on the. Um, all right, so we have premium AM radio, sport interior. Although, what's the difference in weight? Forty kilograms, thirty-four. Yeah, why not? Why not? Key. Uh, no traction aids. No, no, no power steering. Anything advanced forty safety. All right, standard springs, twenty tube dampers, passive sway bars, and. As I quite remember, I was trying to test the racing, the racing uh, suspension tweak. Yeah, this is not my suspension tweak. I've chosen the, the one of the uh, one of the presets, the racing preset, and I was trying to test it if it was good or not. Let's see. The line here is reading a little bit of oversteer, and then it will drop to understeer. All right, so the car can oversteer. That's good. Sportiness is 99.8. All right, let me see if I can actually. No, this this the line here seems very 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 perfect. I don't want to mess it up. I totally forgot like which one of these. I mean, is the less camber mean less grip or more camber? I totally forgot. All right, so. I want to I want to I want to keep give it 100% sportiness value but is it possible so 99.9 .9 seems very appropriate All right drop the drop the right height a little bit and all right 1.9 degrees of roll angle and 99.9% .9 of sportiness, 86 percent. That's good. No, it's not a comfy machine. This is not a grand touring machine. This is a racing car. A racing car from the 40s. All right, looks very, very beautiful. 
and so the, the end result is this these are the all of the engine specs the body specs and so let's go to the market section although this is not a mass produced car no this is a very very or extremely limited car it will do 12 miles per gallon well environmental resistance not bad reliability not bad also it's prestigious it's safe no it's not comfortable it's sporty it's a little bit drivable and practicality not bad it will cost you in the 40s $19,000 that's very very expensive back then that's okay so let's go to the test track uh, so the car weighs 1130 kilograms yep a, tr a, tr a typical lightweight racing car in the 40s uh, well although there is no brake like brake fade whatsoever but the stopping distance well it's perfect in the 40s but in 2018 no that's not perfect but that's what we have here so 219 kilometers per hour is the vehicle top speed 8.8 .8 seconds is the 0 to 100 time quarter mile and 16.6 not bad for 1940s classic. So let's go and see what time it will get. Will get. So it will get two minutes 42.19. Don't worry, we will drive the car on the on the real track, not here. But not bad also, not bad at all. So that's that for this car. Now we will be switching to Beam and G dot Drive game. But before we switch to it, let me try and see if I can like replace it. All right, so do you think do you think it will it will be like two cars because I already I already exported the car to be Do you think it will we will have two cars or maybe it will replace it? I don't know because it's the same name. Hopefully we'll get like it will, maybe it will overwrite it. So yeah, we will be switching to BMG drive right now and uh, yeah, switch to drive the car over there. So yeah. So we have switched to Beam NG dot drive with our creation, the Rebel 200. As you can see, the car looks absolutely beautiful. Headlights are working, high beam, low beam. Uh, we have indicators. Let's see. Yes, they are working. Reverse light. Yes, it's working. Everything. All right. Sounds good too. Uh, I already drove the thing, this car, around the uh, BMNG dust test track, and it does understeer a little bit, but the brakes, oh my god, the brakes are absolutely rubbish. Although they are like super sized, and uh, we are using like like super sporty brake pads or brake shoes when it comes to drums, and uh, yeah, there is no brake fading whatsoever, but it does not stop it will take a long long and hard effort to stop as you will see right now so all right i'm not gonna time my time myself i'm gonna just drive hopefully not spin out or crash so three two one go As I said, the car does understeer a little bit. Check out the amount of braking that I have to do. like there's no brakes but indeed there are it 
does accelerate well and it feels very balanced but the brakes oh my god stop 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 oh man there is no brakes I'm telling you there, is, there are no brakes I should break from here I want to make the corner oh not enough As I said, it does feel balanced, but I really wish there are I can put on it some disc brakes. Even solid discs will, will do the job very well. But drums, oh my god. Let's do another lap. Another clean lap. Hopefully. Hopefully we won't spin out or go on the grass or something. It's not exciting, I know. Some of you will want me to see, to go like 300 km per hour with, with V8s and turbos. But it's not easy to drive this car. It's, it's a bit challenging actually. Oh, brake, 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 brake. Oh my god. Spin out. I had to I had to use the the handbrake and the gearbox plus the brakes themselves to stop and I spun out. It, it will take a little bit of time so, so you can so you can get used to it, so you can so you can remember when to brake at the track. The car accelerates very good, handles very normally, normally a little bit good, not, not bad, but the brakes, these, uh, the brakes themselves are spoiling the whole experience of driving this beauty here. Although there, there is no air, there are no aerodynamics or any kind of skid plate or anything. But feels very balanced, even at high speeds. Oh, brakes from here. Oh, oh my god. Break, oh my god, break. So here it is, another, oh my god, it, it will not stop, come on, brakes are rubbish. Alright, so we have seen this amazing beautiful car, although the brakes need a little bit of work, or maybe hole replacement, but I want to show you what, what, what else did I create at the time when the internet wasn't working. So I don't actually remember like all of them you have seen the VLS V12 and what else. Alright, so today I actually made this one, the Model 17 Trim 16. I, I never actually drove it. It has a 6 liter uh, single overhead camshaft, uh, 4 valves per cylinder V8 engine and a luxury, luxurious interior, rear wheel drive of course and 2 speed automatic gearbox. I'm not kidding, 2 speed. Open differential, of course. Let's see if it, if it will actually work. So the brakes. 
I'm gonna control it manually. No, no, first. It, it's a heavy car. I I think it's two tons. Two tons, only only two speeds. So no, it's not really quick. But I just want to see how it will drive. It actually drives very well. The suspension is actually good. Of course, it's a comfy suspension. It's not a racing, a bunkerous racing suspension. But look, it can spin a wheel. Feels feels fun actually to drive because because uh, it's controllable and the brakes they actually work. It's in the I don't know this 50s, 60s, whatever. I don't know. I don't actually remember. But I think as it has also drums, same as the Rebel 200. But it does stop better because this is not 1940s technology. This is I think I think 1950s or 60s. 60s. I don't actually remember. And it does go quick. Like look, 170 kilometers per hour. One nearly one. Oh, I don't want to crash. It does understeer at high speed a little bit, mm, but it feels good. It feels very stable. What I really like about drum brakes, although they are rubbish, as you have seen in 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 the in the previous car, um, the Rebel. Uh, what, I, what I truly like about them is, if, even if you don't have even if you don't have ABS, they they will not lock. Maybe they will lock maybe in, in in 70s maybe drums, but these ones like 40s, 50s, even 60s, I've tested these uh, brakes, these drum brakes. No, they will not lock, which is really awesome. It, fe it feels like it feels like you have uh, ABS, but we don't we don't have ABS. And the V8 here is very quiet, very smooth. Although I'm pushing the throttle. Oh, yeah, pushing the pedal to the floor. Oh, understeer. Come on, oversteer a little bit. Yes, give me a skid. That's really awesome. So it does look great. Traditional American land yacht, as they call them. Oh, no, don't understeer. Just put your foot down and the tire will smoke. Yes. Perfect. Perfect land yacht indeed. Come on, using the handbrake to stop. I, of course, they are not perfect and I, yeah, I think I made a mistake with the tail lights. They look they look actually modern. I didn't I didn't know that these were the reverse light. Of course, we have indicators. Let me put it in, in park. Looks 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 like a truly truly classic land yacht. All right, so now let's try another creation that I made while the my while my internet connection was disconnected. This one, the Model 12. Uh, this one is like an Italian sedan with a four cylinder. I remember. Yeah, a four. No, no, this is actually not a four cylinder. It, if I'm correct, it's a five-cylinder. Oh yes, I remember because I wanted I wanted this car to be like a surprise for you guys because you always ask me like make a five-cylinder car, make a five-cylinder car, make a five-cylinder car, and I want to make you one. And I thought to myself, why not make a classic one? The car looks beautifully Italian designed, although the although the headlight seems like. I don't know, like a, from, from a Lada, from like a Russian Lada, but the design of the body itself, I truly love these cars, these boxy cars. Some of you will actually hate them, but I love these cars so much because they give me like, they always give me like the, the whole idea of these 70s, late 60s. Yes, I love these cars. And of course, the ones with the with the sporty en engines like the four cylinders, especially Italian ones like a f like Fiat, Fiat cars that looks like this. I love these cars. All right, so this is a front-wheel drive car, four five cylinder five cylinder engine in the front. Of course, it's carbureted. I'm sure of this. Yes, it has a DCOE single carburetor. 
Yes, front wheel drive. Yep, and we can lock the the the, the, tire, the, uh, the tires here because the brakes are discs in front and of course uh, drums in the rear. And it does handle very very good when you are when you are pushing the when you are pushing the pedal or the gas or the, the petrol bed pedal the throttle when you are pushing it it will handle lift your foot and it will understeer oh I, I need to remember the brakes it will spin the wheels it will uh, it will drift actually not drift it will uh, it will do a, like a handbrake skid or handbrake turn easily because it's front wheel drive second gear and it sounds good the five cylinder sounds very very good of course uh, we have indicators we have everything and it's a quick car it's not a slow car you can actually go head to head with that uh, land yacht we just, we, we've just dri driven just drove yeah you can go head to head a five cylinder versus a V8 engine yes you can go that because that land yacht of course it's a luxury heavy big barge of a car with a heavy powerful torquey engine in the front but here the engine I think it's making not really that much horsepower oh, sorry about that the game just stopped for a moment yeah but the, the car itself sounds and look very very awesome of course it will look better with like a red color yellow even even blue it's not the quickest car in the world no of course not of course it's really fun to drive super powerful cars but it's also fun to drive sporty classic sedans because those cars are just so fun to drive they sound very good and they look look very truly classic and look at the acceleration third gear 100 kilometers per hour that's very awesome oh, sorry second gear 100 yeah look put your foot down you will spin the tire it will accelerate it will make great noise it's very basic no traction aids whatsoever check out the sound and of course press the handbrake you can do j-turns also yep pretty pretty good I'm telling you pretty fun to drive and the power although although some of you will say the power is not really that much but it's perfect for the for the body it's, per, it's perfect for the suspension it's perfect for everything all right so now let me show you now the inline 5 turbo monster that all of you has waiting was waiting for um, let me first remember how did it look <sighs> which one which one hopefully it was not deleted I totally forgot which one? Of course, this is not the ah yes, the Vera Five Turbo. Yes, the Vera Five. Now this is a tricky car. Uh, you can drive it without any kind of electronic stability control, as we will do right now. But it's not really easy to drive. It looks very awesome. Carbon fiber bonnet, carbon fiber, basically everything. I'm gonna do a separate video on it. Of course, you need to control it manually, so we don't so we don't crash. Of course, we have ABS, carbon ceramic brakes. So it will grip in a straight line, but yep, it 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 wants to oversteer. It wants to spin out and crash. It wants to kill you. This car will kill you easily, I promise you that. It will, it will spin out and wrap around the tree easily, really easy. Not because of the suspension, not because of anything else, it's because of the engine. The engine is too powerful. 
it, I think it's a 3.2 liter, I think so, I don't know, I think it's a 3.2 liter inline 5 turbo. Oh my god, we were about to crash. I think 7 speed, dual clutch, gearbox, rear wheel drive, monster. It feels like a track car, although this is a track car for the street or for the road, you can use it, it has two seats, sporty interior, I mean it's really really comfortable, it's sporty, it's powerful, it can do great skids, it can drift really well, it can do great donuts, so yeah it's a good car, it's a good sports car. Maybe it's an overkill with all of the carbon fiber. Oh my god, slow down. Ah, see? Even me wants to kill me. Come on, grip. So, yeah, as I said, it will oversteer easily. It will kill you immediately because you'll be wrapped around a tree crying and wishing that you turned on the electronic stability control. I will do uh, the next video after this one that you will, be see, you will be see very soon is a detailed video about this car, like what kind of things that are used in it, what kind of engine is in it. Yeah, well it's very obvious. hopefully. So the car looks very very good and as I said it will do great skids or great uh, donut as I said. Let me show you a good donut. Even at, even at the touch of the pedal because I have a variable controller I can just push the pedal well, like in, in, in any percentage that I want, even with a gentle touch, it will just do a great donut. It's smooth if you want to drive it slowly. The gearbox will shift early, it will be a smooth car. Yep. So it's a good car, it's a truly good car, but as I, as I showed you when we first start uh, driving the Rebel 200, now that was a good car. It looked, it looked very good and, and it definitely drove very, very good. So yeah, th that's, that's the video so far. So thank you so much guys for watching. I truly hope that you enjoyed the video. So please remember, if you enjoyed the video, hit that like button, get subscribed, share the video if you want to share it. This one definitely, definitely sounds much better. Yes, of course, we have the space frame chassis so thank you so much guys for watching uh, i'm gonna see you very very soon with more amazing videos and i do apologize about the, the time that i wasn't uploading anything in it because as i said my internet was broken and now we are back on the track so thank you so much guys for watching and goodbye for now my friends